Where and when graphing motion. To begin with, we're going to check out these graphs that were associated with your cart lab. If you remember in your cart lab when you gave the cart a light push, you got a distance versus time plot that looked like this and a corresponding velocity versus time plot that looked something like this. So this would have been for your light push. This would have what it should have looked like somewhat for your uh, moderate push. And then this is your firm push data. Now in your cart lab they were all overlaid and on one set of uh, axes each, but if we spread them out, again, this is your light push, your moderate push, and your firm push. Let's start by looking at the distance versus time graphs. Uh, for your slow distance versus time plot, or your medium, or your fast, they all have the same uh, quantity that's rising. In this case, it's distance. So the rise of each of these graphs, or the distance here, and the runs of each of these uh, graphs were the time that the uh, uh, carts were running underneath the photo gates here. So uh, we can calculate the slope of these plots, since that's the part that seems unique here for the different speeds, uh, by taking the rise over the run. So the delta D here, the change in distance, uh, divided by the delta T or the change in time, gives us the rise over the run. And uh, that is the slope or the steepness of each of these graphs. Notice in each of these graphs that the faster the cart was going, the steeper the slopes of this distance versus time plot. That should make some sense that uh, the steepness is related to uh, how fast the cars are going because the faster you're going, the steeper this is, the farther you go in the same amount of time. So in this particular plot, uh, a person is walking, will walk uh, four meters in two seconds. Uh, notice that a person will walk eight meters in four seconds. And finally will walk 12 meters in six seconds. So notice that the person really is walking two meters every second. Two more meters in a second, two more meters in a second, and so forth. And uh, that is the speed that the person is walking. They're walking two meters every second. The slope is calculated by dividing the rise over the run here. So obviously the overall rise is 12 meters during a duration of six seconds here, which is the run. So if we take 12 meters divided by six seconds, we take our delta D and divide by our delta T here, we do get a slope of two meters per second. Uh, and uh, that is also the speed uh, in this particular case of two meters per second. Notice the speed is constant at 2 meters per second, and the line has a constant steepness or slope. So in other words, this is staying the same slope all the way here because it's going the same speed. This person's walking the same speed throughout this whole 6 second interval. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this now. Uh, we just want to take another uh, quick look, another example here. Now if a person it will walks 12 meters, but in less time, in this case in only three seconds here, notice that they're walking faster. They're walking four meters every second, and will walk eight meters in two seconds, and 12 meters in three seconds. And they're walking at that constant uh, speed here, traveling a constantly increasing distance uh, in time. And so again, notice that the steepness of the slope is uh, steeper than the previous one because they are walking faster. Remember the slope is rise over run, but we want to be particular here, and what's rising is the distance, so our delta D here is D1, which is 12 in this case, minus D0, which is 0, right here, and then our T1 is 3 seconds, and our T naught is zero. And so our delta D over delta T is 12 meters over three seconds, and it's four meters per second. So please copy this down. This is uh, 
our formal way that we calculate the slope of the distance versus time plot. So pause the video, copy it down, and then come on back when you are done. Now let's add our velocity or speed plots. So this was our slow push. This is our, our uh, moderate push or medium push, and this is our fast or firm push. So notice here that, uh, and these are hypothetical, these, aren't, these don't go with your exactly number-wise with your cart lab. But in this particular example, notice that the distance travel would be 6 meters, and the uh, time to travel it would be 6 seconds. So if I take the slope here, a rise of 6 over a run of 6, I would get a speed of 1 meter per second. And so that's why this is a constant speed of 1 meter per second, because this is a constant slope here. Likewise, for your medium push, notice here we have a rise of roughly 12 meters in 6 seconds. And therefore, we have a speed of 2 meters per second, because 12 divided by 6, 12 meters divided by 6 seconds is 2 meters per second. Again, it's a constant slope because it's a constant speed. Finally, we have a rise <coughs> of 24 meters in six seconds. 24 divided by six is four meters per second. So the greater the speeds here, the greater the slopes. So from all of this, we derive really our first uh, formula here for speed when we have, uh, this is a, either a constant speed or an average speed. Um, and when we do that, we notice that speed is equal to distance divided by time because that was our recurring slope. Uh, we'll look at these, this equation more formally in the future, but right now we wanted to make sure that you understood how that was tied to our distance versus time plot and our slope here, distance over time, was the speed. Great job, and we look forward to moving on.